<laughs> so we're going we're to kick off day two with uh, snoocentral.org, and um, I want to talk about Larry for a second. Uh, Larry's recognized as one of the leading experts on Swedish snus, American snus, and the social ramifications of reduced harm tobacco products in the U.S. Uh, Larry was the first back in 2007 to broadly promote the values of Swedish snus directly to nicotine addicted American smokers. In 2008, he launched snoocentral.org as an all inclusive everything snus repository for Americans searching for the truth about snus. Larry encouraged new snus enthusiasts to write and video their passion posting them free on snoocentral.org. Many moved on to create their own snooze media presences. He has served as snooze product and marketing consultant to major tobacco companies and business intelligence entities. This includes creation of new product flavors to focus group testing uh, to market. He was appointed Swedish snooze ambassador to the United States in Gothenburg back in 2009. It's an official title. He has a seal and everything. It's really cool. <laughs> it doesn't pay anything, but the appointment has come with a rather cool sash. Ten years cigarette free, Larry directly credits Swedish Snooze for the fact that he is alive today. Um, Matt joined them in 2015. Uh, he does a great job doing Snooze reviews on YouTube. Um, I always like watching these other guys uh, more so than myself. Uh, as much as I love hearing myself talk, I love watching these <laughs> other guys. And Matt's been a great addition to the team. And on a personal note, myself, like, like many people in the room as well, can probably attribute Larry for helping them discover Swedish snus. So, in a way, Larry helped save my life too. So, snooscentral.org. Good morning. Are we all as awake as I am? I, I want to keep this a, a little, kind of a look back to the beginning of snus in America and where we got to and where we are today and, and how that journey has been. Uh, I was going to do an amazing technical presentation, but there are too many people in this room that intimidate me that have spoken before and are speaking after. So I'm going to be as general as possible and defer to them in many cases. Um, I, my name is Larry and I'm a nicotine addict. <laughs> I started smoking when I was 13 years old. Uh, because I wanted to look older and be cool, and that's what you did back when I was 13 years old. Uh, I became nicotine addicted. I stayed nicotine addicted. I managed to quit many times, as most smokers have, for as little as 24 hours. Uh, the best I did was five years on hypnosis. But then that something happens. It's a stress situation. Uh, you have that voice in the back of your head saying, I'm having a, a cup of coffee, but I'm not having a cigarette afterwards. I'm having dessert, and I'm not having a cigarette afterwards. And for many years, that was a driving, uh, a driving force for me in, in justifying going back to cigarettes. I discovered, well, Reynolds and uh, Marlboro both launched snus in the United States in 2006 in test markets. They were round can snoots, not the snoots we know today, uh, in regular and menthol. Uh, BAT made the ones for Reynolds. They've had a long relationship, and BAT will probably outright own Reynolds by the third quarter of this year. All the approvals have been going through. Japan just recently approved it. The U.S. has approved it. It failed. Both of them failed miserably. Uh, the American culture, there are... Snus was completely alien. No one knew really what it was. We knew what dip was. I was from the Northeast originally, and my picture of dip was the cowboy on the horse spitting on the dog's head, his juice. And it was totally unattractive to me. And no one in you know the New York area or anything really cared about snus uh, or dipping. So I was de desperate to quit, though, for professional reasons. It's, it, was, it was getting to the point, politically correct this wise where walking into a boardroom and reeking of cigarettes was not a good thing to do. And I tried a few different things. I was an early proponent of Eclipse cigarettes, the first heat but not burn product that Reynolds came out with. Uh, it was a stick with a piece of charcoal on the end that you heated. It smelled like burning paper, and that's what you smelled like. But that's great because nobody knows I smoke unless they see me smoke it. I smell like burning paper. Uh, the problem I had with Eclipse was I would keep flicking it out of force of habit, 
and a little piece of charcoal would fall off on my leg while I'm driving, burn through my pants, burn my leg, and then go flying on the floor of the car, and I'm trying not to crash while I'm doing it. Then one day I get a coupon in the mail from Camel, because I was a Camel cigarette smoker and I was on their mailing list, uh, with a coupon for Camel Snoops. Now I was fortunate in Dallas, we're, we're a test market for a lot of tobacco products and other products in general. So Dallas was one of the original test markets for, Dallas, for Camel Snoops. I went to my 7-Eleven, gave them the coupon, they gave me a free can of uh, Camel Mellow, it was back then. And I went home, I popped it in, I said, Yes, maybe for a little while, if I do enough of this, I'll be able to cut down maybe, who knows. But my next step was to go up to the computer and look to find out where I could buy it online cheaper. Because that's how I had done cigarettes. This was all pre-packed. I, I was a patron of the Seneca Nation toward the end there, the cigarette tax. It's fine in Texas. And I, I did a search on snus, and all these pages came up in Swedish. And there was nothing. I, I, I was baffled. And I found closed forums and old websites mentioning snooze. And I finally clicked on some of the manufacturer sites. And I don't think Google Translate was working yet then, but they uh, actually had an English translation. And I'm like, what is this stuff? And thank God to Swedish Match and my local Cigar Plus store. Five minutes away was a store that carried General Stoos. And fortunately, the, the manager there was very into it and very patient. So I went into the store and I said, let me see this. And he gives me a can of original portion. I open it and I'm like, these are wet tea bags. Well, what do I do with this? And he goes, look, try it. If you don't like it, I'll give you your money back right now. So I took a portion, I put it under my lip. And that, the cigarettes, was the difference between filet mignon and dog food, flavor-wise. A few times I have been able to stop smoking. Uh, when I was out of the country, Cuban cigars, I like to drink fine wines. But when you smoke, why bother? Because your taste buds are dead. I was immediately hooked on it. And it took me a week to transition from cigarettes and snus to snus only. I, I, I guess I was a born-again snoozer, is the best way. I could not stop telling people about it. Now, at the time, I had a, uh, I had a blog called The Unloading Zone. And it was a general blog. It's, it's, the heading is whatever I'm interested in talking about today, that's what I'm going to talk about. And if you're not interested, don't bother reading my blog. And I talked about electronics. I had my Eclipse experience in there did a lot of politics, all kinds of stuff. And I wrote this article called Marlboro and Camel, when it comes to snooze, you lose. And put out my experience. I got an amazing number of hits on it compared to what my articles normally got. And I had a pretty, you know, for a personal blog, I had a good website. And I was a little taken aback. I didn't write again about snooze for a couple of months. But in the meantime, I was doing an enormous amount of research on where you can get Swedish snus reliably uh, over the internet, what it was, the science behind it. Um, Gravardu, that's how I met him, not in person, but through his research. And I, I started learning a lot about reduced harm reduction. So a couple of months later, I wrote a review of some of the snuses that I had tried. Uh, very basic, nothing like the review quality today. And that got a lot of hits. Okay, so this repeated again, and I finally decided that this blog, it was a, a blogger blog, it was just insu insufficient to do what I wanted to do, which was I wanted a site for Americans, which I wish I had had, where you could go and find everything about Swedish snoots, the studies, articles, original articles, links to other articles, graphics, manufacturer information, product information, a forum where people could talk about it, a link to a snooze shop so that, that, that had been vetted so people could actually go and buy with confidence. Uh, a one-stop shop, basically. Now, that's a lot for one person to do. And getting the website up, 
was a fairly costly endeavor. This is the latest incantation incant uh, of it. And, but there were a lot of enthusiasts yeah. back then. And this is in the 2007, 2008, 2009 range. It was really starting to take off. Pre this was just, just before vapor just eclipsed everything. And I had people that were, you know, can we manage the forum? Sure. Hey, I want to do videos. Can I use your, you know, can we set up a YouTube channel and I'll do the video? That's great. All kinds of people coming on, writing articles, having columns. Lars Eric wrote a few articles for us. Uh, it, it was a wonderful time. It was a very heady time. And Snooze really looked like it was going to be able to display cigarette. We would have to fight, but it was going somewhere. And then Vapor came. Now, I tried Vapor in 2009 for the first time at a Tobacco Expo show. And my first experience was, uh, they were mostly Chinese manufactured back then, and this one guy who really didn't speak English in a, in a I guess, a fashionable suit for China at that time, standing literally this far from me, blowing <laughs> e-smoke in my face, <laughs> that was flavored as the Chinese like it, which is not as particularly attractive to Americans. So I wasn't real impressed with vapor, and there was no research at the time. And stories came out about contaminants in Chinese, and the Chinese really didn't care about quality control. But it took off with a lot of smokers, and it evolved. The mods came out. Everything came out. And suddenly, Snus kind of lost visibility. And we were kind of OK with that, because while we were on the upswing, people were the anti-all tobacco extremists. They started saying, hey, what is this stuff? And they started throwing up roadblocks and started to, tried to start intervening. And when everything hit huge with vapor, they immediately changed focus. And it's secondhand vaping smoke and uh, these blow up in your hand and they're going to kill you and our children are dying, even if it's zero net juice. And snooze kind of fell away a little bit. And the communities kept growing, they kept evolving, uh, things moved on uh, to Facebook, there are a lot of uh, closed groups on Facebook now uh, that have replaced forums. And we, we trugged along and snooze grew. And the manufacturers in Sweden, they, they saw the American market as the next great frontier at the time. Uh, in reality, it was really 50 countries, not one country, that, and it needed to be attacked that way. But they, uh, I, went, I went to a um, focus group in Dallas. For, for, it was for Swedish Match, I didn't know that at the time. And we're sitting around, and nobody there really knew anything about snooze. And they put out pictures of people's faces. And I'm like, oh, that's the CEO of Swedish Match. Oh, Lars Eric. Uh, and bang, bang, bang on question, no, you can't do this. One guy was sitting next to me and he said, well, I've never, I'm a bodybuilder and I've never done any tobacco products, but my friend said I should try this General Wintergreen. And I'm like, what are you, crazy? You want to get addicted to nicotine? If you don't use nicotine, don't, you know, buy Tic Tacs. Do something, Altoids, but don't get addicted to nicotine. And um, I was the first one along with, uh, a friend of mine, Rob uh, Jarzanbeck, who used to do Smokeless Aficionado, we were invited by Swedish Match over to uh, the Gothenburg factory in 2009. We were the first American bloggers and outsiders to actually be going through this tour process. They kind of created it on the fly. And what they learned from that was they did a few subsequent groups, and they severely restricted what they could see and take pictures of after what we did. Um, but it was an amazing experience, and it taught me a very important thing. When we think of uh, big tobacco, uh, Swedish Match is big tobacco in the snooze world. But if you remember the slide that Joe showed us yesterday, when you scale it against all the other tobacco companies and IBM and everything else, they're a small entity. I'm thinking Swedish Match, the factory, takes up 5 million square feet. They have 10,000 employees cranking away. It's a huge organization. And I would get a little frustrated sometimes on the, you know, how quickly they would respond to things. And when I got there, I realized, my God, this is, this is not, 
this is big tobacco in Sweden, but it's not this huge Altria Imperial Philip Morris thing that everyone was imagining. And it made it so much easier to understand. And the relationship grew. I went back to Swedish Match a few times. I've been to Stockholm, uh, been to the offices there. Um, I toured the uh, Stromstad and the uh, Stockholm uh, Swedish uh, snoo stores that they had, which were very interesting. And the concept is growing really well. Um, it, it, it's a beautiful company. And uh, in Li Ping, I met the Unz family, who now runs the snoocentral.com snoo store. And let's see if we have that. Oh, actually. Yeah, that's the uh, the current store website, and those specials are good for another nine hours if you like, because <laughs> everything is on GMT. Uh, we had to uh, when PAC came in in two thousand nine, it created some legal issues uh, to be have an organization based in the United States and also be having a new store in Sweden. So about a month before PAC went through. Uh, our lawyers and lawyers for a company called Mae Weibo uh, sat down, put their heads together, consulted with everyone, and uh, we divested the name to them, the SuCentral.com domain and the website, and came up with an agreement to keep everybody happy. So uh, we still have a really strong relationship with them and support them. They were real important to me because when I first started buying online, and it was a nerve-wracking experience, uh, there were basically two stores that people talked about the most, buy Snus and Northerner. And then there were all these horror stories about other shops, be careful, don't buy here because they take your money and they don't really even exist. And <coughs> everything comes U.S. Postal, so there was no tracking. It was a lot cheaper shipping, but there was no tracking and uh, there were a lot of horror stories. I looked at the consistency of complaints and kudos for Northerner and uh, buy Snus. And I found that Northerner would go high, then go low, high, low, and Bison is just stayed kind of consistent. And they were they were uh, owned by Mequibo. So I, I, I started recommending Bison News before the Snoop Central site went up. And then uh, we said, you know, it doesn't make sense to be using an outside company when we're the home of everything Snoops. So that's where the SnoopCentral.com uh, concept came up. But they are, uh, their customer service is amazing. Their backroom operations, I mean, their stores now that are up, some newer stores, they basically have commercial refrigerators like you would find in the retail stores in Sweden. And they stock some snooze, and if they run out, they go down to 7 Eleven and they buy five or ten rolls, uh, or if something new comes out so they can have it on their website. I, a lot of it is proprietary, but even to the ergonomics of pulling the orders for everyone, uh, it's organized so that they won't get repetitive in, uh, injuries from constantly pulling the most popular products and switch things around. Uh, industry, the uh, inventory turn is down to a science. It was down to a science back then. So there is no old snooze going out. Uh, that used to be infuriating back then. Expired snooze. Why bother? Especially if you're paying for it. And it doesn't say it's Yeah. <laughs> and everything was... Uh, it was sad. But we went on and the legislative situation in the U.S. kept growing. Oh, this is one slide. This article was from when we went to Swedish MASH. You can't, you would have to go to it to see the pictures. Yeah. Uh, they're below. But one of the places, uh, we're walking down the corner and they said, that's the chiller room. And we said, well, what's that? And they go, that's where we keep 48 hours worth of stock uh, to age for distribution. And I said, you know, can we go in and look? And everybody's looking at everybody. And then uh, Jens Carlson, who was heading that up at the time, the, uh, the tour, and is now uh, head of Swedish Match Distribution, he said, sure, why not? And we just opened the door. There were four million cans of snooze <laughs> in that chiller. And the pictures, you see me and Rob standing up against these wall of boxes, like, it was, uh, 
it would be like a heroin addict walking into a, a, a swimming pool full of heroin. I mean, it was it was frightening. And that was two days worth of aged product for distribution. It was going right out. It wasn't going to sit there. Um, so that, that was definitely one of the highlights of that trip. So the, I, I started getting more into the legal issues, both here and in the EU, and working as hard as I could to promote snooze here and there and do what I could and wrote about it. And I'm, I'm going to fast forward somewhat. The MRTP application for General, and, and Laura Zero is going to talk a lot about that and be informative, and I'm just a generalist right now compared to him, so I don't want to get into it. But we really thought it was going to go. Uh, Deaton was the first uh, director, Thomas Deaton, of uh, the FTA, uh, FDA Tobacco Products uh, Group, uh, Center for Tobacco Products. And he, his biggest thing was t telling everybody to call him Bopper, because he's a friendly guy, and letting papers pile up on his desk and taking absolutely no action on pretty much of anything. And at one convention, I didn't bring it with me, but I went on the internet and I made this real cool press badge so that I could get into places I wasn't supposed to be able to get into. And I was on the floor and Deaton came off and he was walking out to his car to go back to the airport. And I got in front of him. And we started having a spirited conversation. At least it started out spirited on my part and got very spirited on his. And everybody was surrounding us on the floor. I wish to God somebody had been filming it. And uh, then his security guard came and escorted him out. Uh, but when Mitch Zeller came in, I, I, I was more optimistic because he does, he's always had a, he, he's worked with tobacco before on the other side. So it's a little nerve wracking, but he believes in the continuum of risk. That yes, Cigarettes are horrible, they're up here, they're going to kill you, but that doesn't mean that there are other products below it, with, in my mind, Swedish snooze being least harmful, which is, I think Brad said, 98% plus. I will say 99% less harmful to a smoker than cigarettes. Nothing's completely safe. You can, you can drink too much water and die, literally. Uh, but, but snooze... And his understanding, the way he presented it, looked like we were going to have real forward motion. And then the MRTP goes through. And then it's, we did the public con comments. And my comments were published by FDA. Um, it was going, and then it stopped. Well, we want another 25, 50,000 pages of information on these questions. And it was supposed to take a year. And then it was two years. And I'm calling FDA twice a month. Uh, their public relations guy saying, hi, it's Larry again. What's new on the MRTP? Uh, it's still being processed. Well, can you tell me where it is? Being processed. Whose desk is it on? Someone's. It's being processed. We're looking at it. Can I talk to the commissioner? Will he tell me anything different? No, he'll refer you back to him, me. And it would go on like that month after month. The pre-market application Swedish match put through was incredibly encouraging. It said things like General Snooze is to a smoker would be 70% less harmful than American dip. And then they went down from there. And when it got to American Snooze, which is basically camel snooze at this point, 38% less harmful to a smoker uh, General Snooze was flip that. 38% more harmful than general snooze was to a smoker, where there was more risk. And it looked like a slam dunk. And then they came out with their latest determination. And they want more information. And they said, well, yeah, this is true, but theoretically, blah, blah, blah. It was the most depressing read of my life. And it was a very long read. And the end of back to Matt. Come back to that. In December of 2016, I wrote that article. Uh, the Swedish match MRTPA denial shows FDA approval process is a farce. And it really wasn't a blog post. It was 6,000 uh, 6, characters, which is a lot more than you're supposed to use in a blog type article. And I juxtaposed what they said in the pre-market 
versus what they said in the MRTP. And I didn't know what to say after that, to be honest with you. Where is this going to go? Then all of a sudden, Reynolds puts in four million pages for a camel snus, and we'll see how big tobacco does. And uh, you've got the IOS thing going in. And there's been a lot of confusion, consolidation in the industry. America suddenly is a bigger challenge to break into the market. Uh, I talked to Lars Eric yesterday, and I'm sure he'll speak to this. He's pretty optimistic on the MRTPA, which makes me very happy because I, I had started losing hope there for a while. So I'm going to be more back uh, recharged after listening to him today on that. Uh, but it's, it's going to be a long process. Swedish Match is doing very well with Zint. Uh, I've tried all the Zint flavors. I like it for when I sleep because I sleep with a portion in my mouth and it doesn't stay in my teeth. It's, it's, there's no tobacco flavor to it because there's no tobacco in it. It's a fruit flavor. But I interestingly, when I wrote about it, I, I said that, you know, some people are going to like this, smokers and everything. People that like the taste of tobacco really probably won't. But I got an enormous amount of comments. Where can I find this? Where can I buy this? What is this Zin stuff? Where can I get it? And Chad, I think, mentioned yesterday, he had the same experience when he reviewed it. People are excited about it. And the sales are doing well. And General is going up. And the freshness of General in the stores is going up in a lot of cases. It's, again, going to be a longer process, but it's going to get there. Now, we're not going to see, for those of you who are asking in your heads, we're not going to see any more brands from Sweden coming in here. The process is just too complicated right now. Uh, General Onyx is officially grandfathered, but because changes to the formulation, however slight, it's still going to be a paperwork process just to get that through. Uh, you're not going to see any strongs or extra strongs because you drastically change nicotine and as you can see from vaping and everybody freaking about uh, nicotine, that's going to be a non-starter with FDA. It's going to do snooze more harm than good, quite frankly, at this point in a marketing standpoint. So the internet is still open to us. We have to pay UPS shipping. UPS was given a, mon a monopoly by the U.S. government because they are the only package service that offers adult signature required, which is in the statute. Uh, FedEx and um, DHL, they'll have signature required, but not adult. So they keep raising their rates even though the price of oil is dropping and dropping and dropping, or it did over the years. Um, but we have options. We've got total on the internet probably two or three hundred different options. And they're all pretty confusing now because a plethora of new types of packaging. Uh, you had, originally, you had loose portion, wet portion, and white portion. Now you have dry white portion, slim portion. Uh, the convolutions are unbelievable. Matt here is with, um, he does our Snooze TV channel, which is Snooze Reviews. I don't. My point with Snooze Central was not to, to be all about me. I wanted people that were enthusiastic and skilled in their areas to have an outlet. So Matt is the latest of those. This was back in 2015. They came to me and said, hey, I'd like to really do videos. Have at it. I don't, this is a face for podcasts. Okay? <laughs> you don't want to see me on Snooze videos. So, and Matt's been doing a terrific job and brought a whole new viewpoint on it, getting into uh, analyzing the cans and stuff. Um, am I doing the wrong one? Yeah, I'm doing the wrong one. I hate the... Don't back. say it. <laughs> Get me to the switch. Okay. You'll learn. <laughs> this was back in 2011. And I know I'm skipping around. I just want to give you a flavor of what it's been like over the last 10 years uh, to be an American snoozer. V2 Tobacco was uh, the first company that I bought a lot of snooze from because they had 50 different flavors in off-road. And I'm like, oh boy, I want to try every single flavor to see what I like. And I ordered every single flavor, and I spit every single one out. Then I gave up trying them, and I threw them all in the trash. But what I didn't realize is they were only a year old at the time. 
their internet presence was huge, and I think in big Danish tobacco, and they were operating out of a factory the size of this room at the time. They kept expanding in the building they were in until they took it over, but everything was all over the place because the place has become available piecemeal. And back in 2011, they started building their first big factory. And this is the shell of it. We were there for the inauguration of it. I don't have the slide up here. The biggest draw was um, apparently toilet bowl racing. It's very big in Denmark. And they have these toilet bowls on wheels with, elect with motors. And they set up a track inside <coughs> what was going to be the production floor. And people would take turns racing each other around on the toilet seats. But there was lots of alcohol. We had pigs on spits. And it was an absolutely wonderful time. And we got business done under industrial lights in the back because the electricity wasn't in there yet. We were running off a generator. They since expanded that facility, bought more land about around it, and are expanding it again. And they're the ones that really bought high nicotine snus to the forefront, the Thunder. And Thunder was at the time the strongest snus you could get, and it is today again. Uh, a company called, uh, well, I'll probably pronounce it wrong, Gajane, Johnny. Gayon. Gayon, thank you. Mm -hmm. They came in and they were, a, they were a convenience store product distributor, cups and things like that. And they wanted to have their own private label of Swedish Snoops. So they asked, they contracted with V2 to make Odin's for that. And the biggest stipulation in the contract was it must have <clears throat> one milligram more nicotine or 0.1 than any Thunder product. So we could say we're the strongest nicotine Snoops in the market. And that's when nicotine started really coming to the forefront. And I mean, today, we're at the point, Siberia is an incredible seller. It's all the high nicotines are mint. And there are only so many different ways you can do mint. And I don't particularly like mint snus. I, I'll use it as a change of palate taste. But we're up to 4.5% 4, 4 nicotine now with the Thunder X line. 45 milligrams per gram. What's the point? And, and I get scared because I read articles about these new guys starting saying, yeah, I put in two portions of Siberia Red. Oh. I mean, I have a can of Siberia Red in a box that's this breaking case of emergency. <laughs> so that if it's three in the morning and I'm falling behind on a deadline, I break out the Siberia Red. And if I can do two portions in a row, that's a lot before I start spinning. Uh, the current focus seems to be not on flavor, uh, or quality, but who can give me the most nicotine? And a lot in the, in the younger demographics here in the U.S. is what we see online, and what we sell. The traditional premium brands are still doing very well, but they're going down a little bit. In Sweden, it's a cost factor. Uh, the mid-range products are coming up a lot, and then as Jonas said yesterday, Denmark and the U.S. have one thing in common: is we do love our nicotine. Now, maybe not 4.5%, but Extra Strong, which Swedish Match uh, launched 2008, General Extra Stark, which is uh, General Extra Strong now, as it's marketed as. Uh, that, that was great, and that was a perfect amount of nicotine for everybody. It was under 2%, high in the 2%. Uh, the new black line that uh, the Team X came up with, we don't really know because Scroof never published their nicotine numbers. They just gave us dots. And every time we tried to contact them, they would never give us a straight answer. So we're guesstimating around 1.9%. Uh, okay, good. <laughs> I'll take that as a firm yes. Uh, but th this insane crush, I mean, I mean, Swedish Match even released Volt recently in Sweden, which is 2.6%. Uh, making it one of the highest ones in the 2 to 3% category. It's kind of everybody is searching to catch on to where people are going because the market share, what really matters to the Swedish news manufacturers, which we don't understand here, and why we get frustrated when the store over here doesn't have something or we can't get information. Sweden is the number one focus. How many cans you sell a year in Sweden, followed by Denmark, very closely. That's what makes or breaks the stock price. And the market share and the bragging rights to that is all based on Sweden and Denmark. Uh, or, sorry, Sweden and Norway. No. Denmark is a newer market coming in, tiny share. Uh, 
to the people that wonder if snus like AG snus or V2 tobacco, is it Swedish snus? It is Scandinavian snus, but as a rule of thumb, any snus you can find sold in Sweden, the country of, has to meet the standards of the Swedish Food Safety Administration, which is their version of FDA. And they just tightened those standards up again this April to the point where Matt Myers from uh, Committee for Tobacco Free Kids, one of the biggest anti-everything tobacco groups in the country, uh, and, and frankly, I think is in it for the money, personal opinion, Matt, don't sue me. Uh, he even petitioned FDA to require that the new Swedish standards be applied to all U.S. smokeless tobacco of any kind. So if, it, if, it's a Swedish, if it's a snus that's sold in Sweden, you can rest assured it meets at least the Swedish government requirements, which are the strictest in the world. Swedish Max has their own standard, Skafia Tech, which is the benchmark that uh, most manufacturers use when it comes to uh, harmful substances, TSNAs and things like that. But the bottom line is, I mean, everything in life can kill you. Swedish snus is not going to be the epitaph on your tombstone. Uh, a cigarette pack, sure and uh, eating too much chocolate certainly will be. It, it, it's, I don't want to say a gift from God, but there is a photo of me when I got off the plane in Sweden for the first time. I came out a ramp on the back and I was on my knees on the tarmac kissing the tarmac because <laughs> I had come to Valhalla. This was Swedish heaven, the home of snus. Um, What, um, let me stop for a second, take a breath, and I hope I haven't confused you all in my rambling dissertation. Uh, what question, anybody have any questions or comments? Or, probably not, you're all stunned. <laughs> Most of you went to karaoke last night. Not <laughs> Can I ask you? Yeah. Uh, here in the United States, there are a lot of negative connotations attached to uh, smokeless tobacco, uh, which spills mm -hmm. over to uh, more modern products, if you <coughs> like Swedish snooze. Do you see any change in that happening at the moment? Are people viewing smokeless tobacco any different now than they did five, ten years ago? To a small extent, yes, and what's been interesting to me is there have been some, including some very prominent people in the vaping community, that have never, have never used snooze before, and are suddenly becoming huge snooze advocates. Uh, James Martin, who I think is passed out still in his bedroom from last night, uh, he's one of them. And there are others out there. The, the southern culture is not as much of a problem because they have a history with smokeless tobacco in general. Uh, though, as someone was saying yesterday, you know, it's like, kind of like a war between the dippers and the snoozers in some way. Because, oh, you're putting a tampon under your lip. They're, they're starting to move a little more toward it. It, it's 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 not the same as it was in the beginning. In the beginning, everybody was just, what? Right. Uh, but in, in the north, it's starting to become more acceptable. Uh, you see more people doing it. It's going to be the problem again. Is we're 50 countries, not one. And uh, this was, I think, numbers from two years ago. Um, the snus consumption or the cans sold in Norway were 47 million cans for that particular year. For the entire United States, it was 47 million. So, and that includes camel snus. So it's, they're doing it differently with, with Zinn. They did two test states, got it off the ground really well, and then did it on the coast, the west coast, uh, west of Texas, and are being very successful with it. And eventually, when the time is right, they'll roll it out to the rest of the country, and there is less resistance to a nicotine-only product if you take the word tobacco out of it. So that, that's helping a lot. Um, the antis will compensate, because they always do. But I think that's going to do very well, and that may very well bring people to snooze, because once they're introduced with the portion under the lip and the no drip, and then they want to, oh, this is tobacco flavored, or, you know, I, use, I do cigars, I want to try that. It may be a reverse situation back the other way, assuming the government doesn't just ban everything. 
Yes. Uh, what I didn't really understand is, is the um, bureaucracy and you say uh, the paperwork in order to get, for example, a group to be approved in the States. But is it the same? Re is it lighter requirements for uh, US moist stuff and dip? Because in all the tobacco shops, I, I visited about 12 of them <laughs> since I came here. Uh, there's all kinds of <laughs> colors and, uh, you know, brands, sorts, tastes of uh, uh, moist stuff. Aren't they, if uh, a producer of moist stuff uh, want to introduce uh, a new flavor or a new strength, uh, is it the same uh, complications in order to do that? Right now, at, since PACT and since the the regulations uniformly cover what's considered smokeless tobacco or whatever FDA deems it controls, there's a, there's a substantial equivalence process you can go to. See, a lot of the thing is they grandfathered smokeless products back from a certain point, and the brands Copenhagen, Skoll, those that have been around for years. Uh, they, they getting market approval was not an issue because they were here already basically uh, introducing new re evolutionary products you look what happened is happening with vapor and there are plenty of holes that they were able to get through and now everybody is scrambling to plug them when it comes to snooze uh, what it takes is time money and lawyers and most of these uh, the smaller manufacturers in Sweden they don't have the money Odin's was in the U.S. for a period of time, available through a U.S. distributor, but they just didn't have the money to go completely through the, the process, and they're no longer stocked by The only snooze that's stocked by a distributor in the U.S. now is Swedish Match, Pre-Tech, uh, as well as Swedish Match themselves distribute that. And um, there was some Jacobsons, I think, that may be still around, but anything you else you see in a shop is somebody bought it from Sweden and they put it on their shelves and if they get caught in an inspection they're in a lot of trouble. But it is very tough to get a new product. Conversely, you can walk into a Walmart and you'll find an end cap display of Nicorette gum in all kinds of kid-friendly flavors with absolutely no protection standing there where mom's in the checkout line and the kid can reach down and rip some out of there. They're not even plastic sealed boxes. Uh, it's a big double standard and it always favors big pharma. Yes, sir. You're talking about the MRTPs for Swedish Match, and they're given percentages of this product is 38% less, and this one's 78%. But then when, when somebody like Dr. Radio speaks and says, well, all these products are, are way here at 98%, except for maybe some snuff. So how does that translate? How do they get these numbers? They're, that's a huge difference. The studies that FBA, FDA uses are pretty much cherry-picked. Uh, and... They, they've come to a predetermined conclusion in a lot of cases, and they're using studies that will match that. Uh, Brad's studies are legitimate. They've been vetted. Uh, he's identified the studies that FDA has used that are not accurate and shown why with footnoting to the studies that go to the accurate ones. Uh, you can read anything the way you want, and if you have an agenda and under the Obama administration, the agenda was definitely, we're not tobacco friendly, even though the president was still smoking in the closet for quite some time. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Anything else? Okay, then we're going to do what everybody should do, who has anything to do with snooze, and we're going to do a quick snooze review on a snooze that Matt and I have never tried. It's a new snooze. So you want to do just the original, or you want to do the white too? Uh, I got the original one. Okay. And I've had that in for a while. Uh, do you want to do white? Like, the original? Oh, put the can out there. We'll do the original. Oh. This is by Fiedler & Lundgren, which is a BAT company. It's a value brand, uh, relatively new to the market. And it's getting some buzz. I haven't tried it yet. It's not bad. How do you pronounce it? <laughs> <laughs> You're a bastard, aren't you? Because <laughs> I don't know. Connect. 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 See, I told you. Connect. Connect. Thank you. <laughs> that is a challenge in uh, 
for example, uh, Grove is, is more groove, groove, I think is how it's pronounced. Groove. Uh, groove, groove, as opposed to the American uh, Grove. Uh, general is really general or general. Um, it's kind of funny, uh, but they, the, Swedish, uh, the Swedish are very patient with us in our mangling of uh, scruff is scroof. So uh, it, it's, a, it's a lot of fun learning. I thought you'd been trained by going to IKEA and reading all these strange names of the products. I, I'm a little nervous IKEA. about the things falling over on me. I can't. Yeah. How come IKEA doesn't stop? I, I, that's an interesting. I'm actually, I was, we were talking about that yesterday. Yeah, yeah. Probably because of the tobacco license situation, because they do sell Swedish food, yes, so they, they have do. food licenses and stuff. Um, this has the new Swedish. Now, this is something new too. Sweden never had. They had a small warning label, uh, warning on the back, but they never had anything extensive on the cans. They mandated this warning and also how to be on the back. I think, I don't know, maybe the government, the, uh, the people in the Food Administration are, are self-hating Swedes. Uh, they seem to do everything they can to impede snus, which is their national product. Right down to the EU, where if you, t the, Sweden is the only country where snus can be produced and consumed in the EU, you cannot ship it to any other EU country legally. That's a restriction of trade, which is, is the, the hallmark of the entire EU agreement, is trade barriers. And if you think, and then EU turns around and makes regulations prohibiting snus, but it's not allowed anywhere except Sweden. So the, really what they're doing is writing Swedish law, domestic law, and it just happens. And I've always said they should hire American lawyers because we would never tolerate that. <laughs> and um, it, it's a little frustrating. So now you do have new warning labels on here. Can uh, graphics, pretty attractive. Yeah, nice I like font. It. I, like it. Uh, I would almost think, in some reason, I, I, when I first saw it, I thought maybe it was a Scroof product. Because yeah. it reminded me a little bit of Scroof. Uh, but it is not. Let's make that very clear for Scroof. They don't re want responsibility for this. Um, I like the sword and shields. What, what, what is your opinion of this so far? It's good. It's, um, it's, it's a budget brand, right? So, I mean, it's, it's pretty flavorful for a budget brand. Um, it's got a good tobacco base there, a little bit of pepper in it. Um, pretty good salt presence, too. It's not overdone. No. Uh, you do smell the ammonia with the, uh, when you first open the can, which yeah. is something that's faded with most other Swedish snuses. It, um, for me, it, it, it's as he said, but I'm noticing the portion flattening quicker yeah. and the run is starting to go down. So it's not going to last, I don't think, more than a half hour with any real flavor to it. I'd probably give it about 25 minutes. Yeah. And yeah. it's a regular strength nicotine, which would put it somewhere around. 0.8%. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, it, it, nothing high there, but it's it's effective price point. And when you have the tax rates in Sweden, which insanely pub they punish snus because they know it can't be illegally imported because Sweden's the only one that really makes it. Denmark is such a small percentage. Cigarettes they live in terror of uh, because they are brought over the border. As soon as the cigarette tax goes too high, they're smuggled in from Eastern Europe and Russia, and that Swedes don't get any tax money out. And that is the driving concern of Sweden and the U.S. anywhere, making tax money off of a product you publicly condemn and making sure it keeps coming in. So that's why you're getting more of the budget brands, the mid-price brands, uh, and the premium brands are for those who can afford them and are not willing to sacrifice. But fortunately, the rate, is, I mean, to put it in perspective for, for the Americans here, 10% million Swedes use snus. Population of Sweden is around 10 million. The population of New York City is coming up on 10 million. Mm -hmm. Imagine if 1 million New Yorkers that are currently smoking use Swedish snus. The change there would be in the culture. You'd go into a restaurant and you'd see people with their cans of snus on the bar. 
and on the table. And you wouldn't have all the, oh, like you do uh, now, or the, what the hell is that? Uh, you wouldn't have people having to hide the smoke or vape. Uh, and that's really when you look at the market comparison. Sweden would be comparable to New York City. So the United States as a whole is going to be a big chunk for all the manufacturers to swallow. But we're doing the right thing. And to me, that, 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 that what drove me to all this in the beginning, to put my time into it. And even, yeah, I, got, I kind of went into a funk after the, the December MRTP decision, which Lars Eric is going to bring me out of shortly. But we're saving lives. I mean, the most gratifying thing, uh, I know Chad and I have talked about this, is when we get comments or emails saying, you know, I was able, I had smoked for X number of years, I was finally able to stop. My wife is so happy because she hates the smell and she's worried about the kids. Thank you for, for bringing me to this. Just the satisfaction of that alone justifies the expense and the time and the frustration and everything else. Uh, I, I consider it a service to humanity. You get 150 million smokers in the EU, in an EU that bans snus, even though the underground is running very well, it's still banned. Imagine if, and, and that's, a, that's all socialist health benefits. The government pays for it, or the people do through their taxes. Imagine the burden off the, the EU healthcare system if you took out 150 million cigarette smokers and had them on snus. Imagine in the U.S., smoking-related diseases, we've gone down in large measure to vapor recently, but we're 37 to 39, depending on the numbers, million smokers still in the U.S. And they're not doing it because they like the flavor, or they like their friends yelling at them, or they like having to hide, uh, or not be able to smoke within 100 yards of anything human. They do it because they're addicted. And cigarettes are the most effective nicotine addiction delivery system on the market. So if we can help those people, we can save money for the public health. We won't have these issues with Social Security and Medicare going broke. Uh, maybe we can lower our deficit from $20 trillion uh, before it breaks us. That's what this is really all about to me. I'm not here to promote tobacco. I'm here to promote saving lives. Exactly. <laughs> right. Final thoughts? Final thoughts. Um, I mean, I would say this is, I mean, Pretty close to a, a good, you know, a, a group snooze. It's, good. it's close to that, in my opinion, as far as flavor. But um, not longevity. Not longevity, no. No, it's not as bold, but it's product, something Matt? close. You may not remember this, Larry. You remember the old Lucky Strike? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I've been told that that recipe is not a clone, but was inspired by the old Lucky Strike. Hmm. It's possible a lot of the, uh, the old Gallagher brands were inspired by... Go to board scrappy. I hope I got that right. Okay. Well, we you also have to voice, you have to voice happy. Rappy. Happy. Okay. Well, I miss Close. Lucky Strikes and Lucky Strike Knights. They might come back. You never know. BAT is getting aggressive in Seuss again. So we'll see. Um, yeah, that's the other thing. Uh, unique products. Um, why did my mind just go blank? The white Porsche. The white Seuss. Uh, Epoch, Epoch. Uh, it, did, it didn't make sense to me when it came out. How can it still be tobacco after you've bleached everything out of it right. and you've thrown back in some flavoring and nicotine salts? But BAT just bought them. They bought Winnington. So they obviously some, see some potential in it. Swedish Match is coming out with uh, G4 for Norway, uh, which is essentially, I think, the same thing. I haven't tried it, so Chad's got something he's going to let me try. Um, everybody's throwing everything at the wall to see what can stick when it comes to flavors, when it comes to new concept ideas. Uh, Bank has a new amazing concept for getting rid of burn from regular snooze. I tried it, it's called Sting Free, and it basically blocks out, you put it on a portion side that goes against your gum, and it's, uh, it's not permeable. So you're not getting that gum burn from the nicotine, but you're getting the absorption on the other side. And it takes a little bit longer to start running, but once it starts running, it tastes fine. So that's another innovation. And I know he's been in discussions with several manufacturers, including Swedish Match. You may see something like that coming along too. 
people are innovating and throwing stuff at the wall, but the important thing is that some stuff sticks because we really, really, really need to solve this problem with cigarettes. And that's all I have to say. Any yes? Yes, the, it, the name is Ip Epoch, not Epoch. Epoch, yes. Epoch. Yes, yeah, a time, area of time. Gotcha. Epoch, new time. It's new time with uh, be it, be, uh, winning time. As a uh, uh, BAT Epoch. company. Yes, as yeah. of recently. But I believe not. But read about it in Zobogomir. I will, except I can't read Swedish. That's you can't read Swedish. We have 1,558 words that are, are the same in Swedish and English. Okay. And read them to start. Okay. And you understand the rest. Beautiful. I will do that. I have uh, all your magazines I picked Good. up here. Uh, Epoch is, is a nice Epoch. news for me when I go to bed. Epoch. 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 Epoch has no burn. Uh, it's white so it doesn't stain your teeth. And I sleep with portions in. So, I, yeah, I do 24-7. So, Epoch is, is a nice option for me. No, it's just a little lime. I like the lime one. I fall asleep. Or Swedish match. Lab 22, which is a tobacco product, but it has fluoride and xylitol in it. That's so, that's Jennifer's favorite too. So it's strengthening my teeth, and it's killing bacteria in my mouth while I sleep. So I can feel good after brushing my teeth and putting in a Lab 22. Yes, sir. Hey, Larry, how, how did you deal with smoking uh, overnight when you were smoking? Did you get up that's and smoke a cigarette? Usually, no. I slept like the dead. Uh, if I did get up, though, for any reason, you, you. then it would be, let's head out to the garage and have a cigarette before we go back mm -hmm. to bed. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that was always a little strange for me, too. I can't go without the nicotine and snooze, but yeah, I could go through the night. And I can't sleep without snooze. I just choose not to. <laughs> <laughs> yes. it's, it's funny that Dr. Rudu brought that up. And I see this with vapors and, I, and, and, and the crossover to snooze. It's this thing that we have control that I see. That I just can't understand. When I, I smoked cigars, I smoked pipes, I smoked every, anything that I could. But when I went to a restaurant, I wasn't concerned about that. I, I was eating a good meal. I was not worried that, oh, I have to smoke right now. I have to vape right now. I have to snooze right now. Uh, when I took a plane flight, I mean, I was happy because I was going somewhere. I didn't worry about, oh, I have to smoke. I have to, you know... And most plane flights, the average plane flight is around two hours in, in the U.S. It's a little under two hours. So I just don't understand where snoozers, vapors uh, have to feel that they have to go and do that during a flight, during a... Do you see what I'm saying? And I, I just don't... Where you're saying, when I fell asleep, I, I mean, hell, I smoked right up until the minute I... I, I, I put the sleep timer on the TV, fell, put my head down, and I stopped smoking. But you're telling me you're falling asleep with it in your... I just don't get it. And that's something that really is frustrating. Well, what I, I think it's a lot control. of it is because of the way... And, and I'm going to defer to, to Brad and Lars Eric on this because I, I don't even pretend to be a scientist on TV. Uh, <laughs> The cigarettes, the delivery, and what makes it so addicting is you get an immediate spike and then it falls off very quickly. So it's noticeable to a smoker when your nicotine is wearing off. Mm -hmm. There's also sugar is one of the ingredients in cigarettes. So you get into a blood sugar issue. That's why in the afternoon a lot of times you feel like you need that cigarette to boost you up. And it's also a little bit of a blood sugar thing. Uh, I'm diabetic and I noticed I started taking blood sugar readings while I was smoking toward the end and comparing them to when I was snoozing. And my blood sugars were lower uh, after I stopped. That chart. Yes, I brought this chart with me, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, which shows a lot of, yeah, it's showing the spike and the effect of how it goes. Snooze lasts longer and it's a gradual come down. I'll do it, you know, one of the things interesting about, about nicotine is, especially cigarettes, when you're agitated or you're stressed, you smoke to calm down, but when you want to calm down at the you know at the end of the night, when you relax, have a nice cigarette to calm down first before you go to bed. Um, 
I think that's why it's so noticeable with cigarettes compared to snooze. Vaping, I honestly never understood uh, from a, from a concealment perspective because snooze, I can go anywhere. Very discreet. I, I can go into hospitals. I can sit on planes. And when you when I fly to Sweden or Denmark, if I didn't have snooze, I mean maybe a two hour flight, but I'm not getting over there. And if, when I was a smoker, it would have been impossible. Uh, but I, don't know where I, I think uh, the nicotine is not necessarily. I'm, I'm a 24/7 snoozer as well, and, and for the rest of you, you snooze. It's not necessarily having. It's the absence of snooze that is terrifying. Yes. It's, it's like an adult pacifier. Yes. You, you call it a pacifier. <laughs> yeah, the, the kid things that they suck on. Yeah. So it's an adult pacifier. So when you don't have it in your mouth, you feel like you're yeah. you're missing something. It's very intimate. It's in your mouth. You touch it with your tongue. Right. And not having it there is. It feels wrong. I've used the uh, nicotine-free, tobacco-free versions uh, at night sometimes, and it's exactly that. It's yeah. the pacifier effect. I don't have that that comfortable pillow under my lip, mm -hmm. and it, it's less the nicotine than it is that. <laughs> Any other questions? Thoughts? Great. Then we're going to bail and let the real. Thank you for listening.